Welcome to this lesson on the integrated reasoning section of the GMAT. Our goal in this lesson is to quickly overview the integrated reasoning section and then briefly look at the four question types that come up in this section. To start, in terms of order, the integrated reasoning section is the second section of the GMAT. It comes after the analytical writing assessment, but before the quant and verbal sections. In terms of what you'll get, on the integrated reasoning section, you'll get 12 questions and you'll have 30 minutes to answer them. But the score you get for the integrated reasoning section is separate from the score you'll get for the analytical writing assessment and separate from the score you'll get for the quant and verbal, that 200 to 800 score. The integrated reasoning section is scale, scored based on a scale from 1 to 8, where 8's the highest score, and it's done in one point increments. What's important to note, though, is that the quant verbal 200 to 800 score is by far the most important component of your GMAT score and that the integrated reasoning score and the analytical writing assessment score will both be secondary to that primary 200 to 800 score. On the integrated reasoning section, when we say you have 12 questions, the way a question is defined on the integrated reasoning section is as everything that shows up on the screen at the same time. In fact, some integrated reasoning questions will have two components, others will have three components. In order to answer those questions correctly, you must answer each individual component correctly. There is no partial credit on the integrated reasoning section. Similar to the quant and verbal sections, the integrated reasoning section must be answered in order, meaning you can't skip ahead or go back to any previous question. In order to move on to the next question, you must answer the question you're currently on. And once you've answered a question and submitted it, you can't go back to it. Unlike the quant and verbal section, the integrated reasoning section isn't adaptive. It's not changing based on how you're performing. If you answer a question correctly, you're not getting a harder question next. The section is fixed. The 12 questions you get are fixed from the moment you start the section. Now, on the integrated reasoning section, and only on the integrated reasoning section, you have an on-screen calculator available to you. While this may seem like a huge advantage, what you're going to learn is, often, you can work around complex calculations by strategically thinking about the information you've been given, by strategically comparing values, by estimating or approximating values. Oftentimes, you're going to see that the calculator isn't something that you need, but rather can be a crutch. So really think of it as a last, like a last uh, resort. Only use it when necessary. Often, challenge yourself to find better ways around the calculations, and when you start to do that, you'll be able to answer these questions more quickly and without getting stuck in any complicated math. One thing to note about the on-screen calculator is, since it is on-screen, it's a bit cumbersome to use, so only use it when necessary. In fact, a lot of times our over-relying on this calculator can slow you down uh, significantly in terms of the integrated reasoning section. Now, there are four primary question types that show up in the integrated reasoning section. The graphics interpretation question, multi-source reasoning question, table analysis, and two-part analysis. Those are the four question types that show up in integrated reasoning. Whereas the skills tested in the quant and verbal section in terms of content um, will not likely show up in business school, meaning probably at no point in business school will you ever think to yourself, oh, I need to know the Pythagorean theorem to answer this. Unlike the quant and verbal section, the integrated reasoning section, the, the question types you'll, uh, you'll be exposed to are actually designed to specifically resemble the type of problem solving you'll be doing in business school and eventually in your business career. So let's start by taking a look at the first of the four question types, graphics interpretation. Just like you think uh, based off of the title of this question type, you will be given a graph of some sort and you will have to interpret that graph or interpret the data or information on that graph to answer questions. It is all about, these question types are all about testing your ability to process visual information. In order to reveal the answer choices, you'll see there's a drop-down menu. You've got to click on the drop-down menu. It will then un uh, unveil 
all of the answer choices, and then you will choose the correct answer choice, uh, and then the, uh, the drop-down menu will close up again. Now, in graphics interpretation questions, you'll see on the screen now, there are two of these drop-down menus, meaning there are two statements that you have to choose the correct answer from the drop-down menu. So in order to answer this one graphics interpretation question correctly, we'd have to answer these two components correctly. There is no partial credit here. The next question type is the multi-source reasoning question. In this, it's going to test your ability to interpret data, to uh, put together data from different sources. And the way the sources will show up will be as tabs, similar to like your internet browser. Sometimes there will be two, sometimes even three tabs of data. And by clicking on a tab, the data on that particular tab will, will be brought to the front and everything else will be hidden. You won't be able to look at all three tabs in this case at the same time, but rather you'll have to move amongst them in order to bring up their information or their, 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 their content. Now the information on the tabs will often be some kind of text, in this case three different emails. It could be charts or tables of some sort. And one of my favorite things, the multiple dichotomous choice questions. What a multiple dichotomous choice question is, it sounds super fancy, but it's just a question in which there are only two possible answer choices. In the case of multi-source reasoning, you're being asked a series of yes-no uh, questions. In order to answer this question, the one that shows up on the screen currently correctly, you'll have to answer three yes-no statements correctly. And the way it works is, you need to determine whether the statement that you're given can be inferred from the data in the tabs. And if it can be inferred, you click yes. If it can't be inferred, you click no. You've got to answer all three statements correctly in order to get this single question correct. The next question type is the table analysis question. And this is very much your testing your ability to work with spreadsheets and interpret data on spreadsheets. Now, since it is a spreadsheet, you'll have the ability to sort. And you'll go to the sort by, you'll click the drop down menu, it will then bring up all of the different column headers, and you can choose to sort by those different columns. In the table analysis questions, the multiple dichotomous choice question is a true false question. And you'll have three of those statements to answer in order to get the single table analysis question correct. The last of the four integrated reasoning section question types is the two-part analysis question. Now, in the two-part analysis question, there are two parts you have to answer correctly. You have to answer correctly for one column, and then you have to answer correctly for the second column. Now, if you'll note, the different answer choices are available for each column. These question types will test you in both quant and verbal skills. And just because you have the same answer choices available to both columns doesn't mean that each column must have a different answer choice. It is possible that the same answer choice could be correct for both columns. In the two-part analysis question, they'll give you a series of information. And this information you'll have to use to determine, in this case, uh, how large the projects Team A and Team B can take, based solely off the information they've given you. So it's testing your ability to take, oftentimes, incomplete information and filling in the gap. So what we're going to see in subsequent lessons is a further analysis of the four different question types and taking a look at specific examples of each. Just remember when working with integrated reasoning, since it's a different section from anything you've seen on any other standardized test, it's gonna be important to get this practice under your belt so you can go on a test day confidently.